Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Laser101. I am a beginner laser enthusiast who recently picked up the longer Ray 5 10 watt laser engraver. Uh, I've been playing around with it for about two weeks. I've kind of learned the basics and I wanted to bring you a video to show you how to take a simple JPEG from the internet and turn it into something your laser can understand and cut and engrave. Um, I've noticed there's a lot of good videos on YouTube on how to use this, but some of them are not that beginner friendly. And there's a lot of people in the Facebook groups and in the forums that have a laser engraver and they really have no idea how to create a file. So to create a file from scratch in Lightburn is pretty complicated. You have a couple simple shapes here, but um, if you use the trace feature, it's a really cool feature in Lightburn. It pretty much lets you take any picture from the internet, turn it into a tracing or a file with a little bit of modification. You can whip something out, uh, something like this up in about five to 10 minutes. It's very simple. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm using these little four inch by four inch blanks. These are from Amazon, 2.5 millimeter thick, uh, 100 by 100 millimeter. I also have these bigger ones over here. These are three mil thick. Um, if you're interested in those, it's a good cheap way to uh, kind of get some practice without destroying a lot of expensive wood. So I'll put the link to those below. Uh, and yeah, I'll show you how to get into the Lightburn software, get started. There's a 30 day free trial. So download it, install it and uh, stay tuned. Okay, so this is what you should see when you open Lightburn for the first time after you've activated your trial or if you've paid for the subscription. Now you are going to have to connect your laser. I would recommend watching a specific video for your laser on how to set it up, but it's these three tabs over here for the settings. Now we also wanna have the laser tab and the cut slash layers tabs open. All the tabs are found right here. You can pull them out and move them around, but I like to have them snapped to this home screen. So once you have everything looking like this, we can go ahead and get started. So we're going to pop over to the picture we want to recreate. In this case, it's an ambulance. They want $3.42 for this. You can see it is an SVG file, but we don't want to pay for it. We want to make our own. So when you try to save the image, you're going to notice it's the wrong file type. This picture is actually a link. So you need to click on that, go to the actual image, then save it as a JPEG file. So just give it a name, save it to your desktop or your documents, uh, downloads folder, doesn't matter. Spell it correctly, not ambulance. And then you can go ahead and hit save. It will start to download the file and then we need to go back to Lightburn and import it. Don't try to open it because you won't be able to find it. You need to import and then locate the file under the name you saved it as. So there's our ambulance. We can bring it in. As you can see, it's black and white. Obviously we can't laser in color. So I like to move it over here to the right. I kind of like to work in the bottom left corner here. So we're gonna do the trace in the right side. So you need to right click on it, go down to trace. Now Lightburn automatically kind of selects what it thinks you want and it's usually very accurate. So I like to click fade image uh, and you get a little bit better look at it. Just check all your lines, see if that's basically more or less what you want. Um, you can slide this little bar here to take more or less of the original image, but Lightburn does a pretty good job of getting exactly what you want. So um, if there's other layers you want that it won't select, sometimes you have to do this in two separate layers, but this one's nice and easy. So we can drag our original image away right click it or just hit the backspace tab, go to delete, and essentially we have our SVG. Now if you were going to just burn this onto a piece of wood, just engrave this, you'd basically be done. Now Lightburn has already selected a fill for this. It assumes you want to engrave this on something, so it's selected the fill and some settings I've used in the past. So if you highlight the ambulance and hit this preview button, It'll actually show you what the software is planning to do with this. So you can see it's going to fill in a lot of that ambulance. It's going to take about an hour's time. Uh, we are not planning to fill this in. So we're going to modify this a little bit and I'm going to show you how to cut this out. So before we can modify this, we need to ungroup all these lines. You see when I click on it, it selects the whole picture. So right click it and go down and click ungroup. Then click off the ambulance and click back on this outer line and you'll see it only selects the border, which is what we want. That's gonna be our cut line. So we need to basically tell it that we are cutting this instead of filling it. So for cuts, I like to use red, that's my layer two. Um, I've already got the settings filled in here, 375 millimeters per minute at 90% power. Seems to be a pretty good cut speed for two and a half to three millimeter wood. Um, I just like to make everything that I'm cutting red so it stands out, it's a little bit easier to see. As you can see on these wheels, we're gonna have a problem. It's gonna cut the wheels off the ambulance, so we are going to have to modify that outer line to include the bottom side of the wheel so that they don't fall off when we pick up the finished product. Now before we modify these cut lines, just select this whole area, right click, and make sure where it says convert to path is already gray. That means it's already, it's already a path. You don't need to change it. As long as it's gray, you're good to go. If not, click that button. 
Then come over here and click Edit Nodes. This is going to allow you to sort of move that red line around the way you want. So click on the red line. You're going to see all these little blocks up here. The blue ones are how we shape it. The red ones are sort of the path of the line. So we're going to be grabbing these little red blocks all across uh, the wheel arch here and just moving them down to include the wheel. So I like to pull them straight down, try to keep them on the same line they started on just to sort of keep the shape of the wheel um, the way it was meant to be. Pull everything down so the lines sort of follow the contour of what the body would be or of what you want the line to be. You'll see in a minute here, these don't have to be absolutely perfect, but for the sake of the video, I'll try to get them as close as I can. Just sort of put that one in line with that horizontal line that would be the ambulance body. This one could be lower to hair. And I'm just going to move this one over to the actual wheel just to make it a little bit easier to align. Pretty much like that. So once we have all of the red dots uh, where they need to be, you're going to grab these blue lines and just sort of shape them in line with the wheel. Experiment with them. You can see what they're doing to the red line. You just have to play around with the position of them. So if you want the line to be straight, you pretty much move the blue line straight in line with the, the existing line or the, the line that the red dot would follow. These ones just rotate around until you get the arch that you're looking for on the wheel. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as that red line sort of includes the wheel, it's, it's going to look just like a wheel. As long as it's generally round and you've got it pretty close, it doesn't have to sit right on the black line, but the closer the better. So when you're all done, it should look something like this. Like I said, as long as it includes the wheel, it's going to cut that round shape and look just like a wheel when it's said and done. So go ahead and click off of that. You can zoom out, have a look at it overall, make sure everything's pretty close and you're happy with the way it looks. And then we can move on to the other wheel. Okay, so now our wheels are fixed. Our outer cut line should be looking something like this. Now I like to click on that line and just go to the preview button once again, get an idea of what that shape's going to look like. If there's any gaps in the line, it'll usually tell you that it'll be unsuccessful. It'll say there's a gap somewhere in it, so you'll have to find that. But after this, we, uh, we can basically go and mess with our fill settings here, have a look at how dark we want to um, essentially draw that line, those lines inside the ambulance. Um, I don't want to fill this one. I'm just going to do a line. I generally cut these out for my son. He loves to color on these. He drives them around and just does different colors on them with crayons. So I don't fill them in. I let him do that. But um, basically to, to do our inner colors, the easiest way I find to do it is to just click the cut line and move it out of the picture just to the right and then we can select our entire uh, our entire ambulance the lines left over change that to line and then use some settings that are good for engraving lines on your laser for me I'm going to change that to around 2000 and yeah, maybe I'll go with 35 percent power and then we can move the outer cut line back onto the shape if it doesn't seem like it wants to go back exactly where you had it, just zoom in closer. Uh, the, the further in you zoom, the, the finer the adjustment, essentially, you can tend to find that sweet spot. Still being a little bit stubborn for me. There we go. You might just have to zoom in a little further. And at this point, we are pretty much ready to cut. So before I cut, I like to highlight the whole thing and just regroup it. You don't have to do this, but before I save a file or I cut it, I just group it in case I grab something and I throw it way on the left field. Um, the whole thing's all one piece. So do a quick preview, see what it's going to look like. We can hit play on this and watch the actual cut. It's going to do all of our inner lines first. Everything looks pretty good. And then it will do our nice slow cut around the perimeter. And if you're happy with the way it looks on there, just go ahead and hit OK. Um, you do still need to highlight the image before you send it to the laser. A lot of times if you hit start on the laser and you don't have anything selected, it just won't go. You'll see you have nothing selected. So I'm going to scale it down to uh, fit on one of those little 4x4 four four squares that I have, the 100 mil by 100 mil. So make sure it's within the 100 mil lines and you'll know it's going to fit. 
put in the bottom left corner. I am going to do another video on how to align your laser, how to know where it starts, but for now we can go ahead and hit that start button and watch it cut. And with any luck, you should be left with something just like this. So if it didn't cut for whatever reason, you may have to go back and play with your settings. Like I said, that cut speed is pretty good for the longer Ray 5 10 watt laser and two and a half millimeter thick plank. So if you have a different laser or you're using thicker wood, you will have to play with those settings. If it didn't cut all the way through, then just try it again. Like I said, these are nice little planks to uh, experiment on and to learn on so you're not wasting too much wood. But um, yeah, this is a nice easy file to start with. I will include the file in the link. Uh, sorry, in the description, I'll put a link to that file. If you want to just download it and cut it out to play around, you don't think you're quite ready to try making one on your own, I will include the file. All I ask is that you subscribe to this channel to uh, kind of support me. And um, yeah, I look forward to making a bunch more videos on this laser. It's uh, definitely been a lot of fun. Like I said, I haven't had it that long. I am a beginner. So if there's a better way to do something in light burn, you know, I'm just probably not aware of it. But I just thought uh, a beginner, for, beginner to beginner might be a nice way for some people to learn. Like I said, some people that are more experienced, they just blast over certain things in, uh, in Lightburn that you may need to get started. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Think about hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.